It is now our privilege to invite to deliver the keynote address Mr. Brijesh Dholakia, CEO of Hari Krishna Exports from Surat. Good morning to one and all. Good morning to one and all. Youth is here and I'm going to address to all of you. The only thing I'm going to share is the journey of mine when I was born to reach here on the stage. Mr. Martin asked me, did you address to 10,000 youth here? I said, I did not address, but I'm used to it because my uncle, Sauji Bhai Dolakya, has been addressing and I'm always with him like a shadow behind him. So I'm used to it. When I talk about my uncle, I will start the journey of our family and then why did Daji called me here to end with the story. So first of all, my uncle, when he was 12 year old, all the way from our village in Amreli district in Gujarat, came to Surat as a polisher because my grandfather and grandmother wanted all of us to be in Surat for whatever reason they wanted that work in the city. If you don't want to study, no problem, but you must go to city. And my uncle did not like to go to the city, but he stayed for three years, worked hard, and thought if I gather some money, my grandmother will ask him to stay back. But that they never ended because my grandmother gave him three targets that be a big man, be a good man, and have some fame in the society. Till day, we have been increasing our values and traditions in our company and family. And my uncle in 1992 started Hare Krishna Exports with all three brothers. So my father and my uncle, they are four brothers. And in second generation, we are eight brothers and I'm fifth one towards it. And as I mentioned, why am I here? We'll share in the story. So I'm only here to share our story and tradition and family values. After we started Hare Krishna Exports in 1992, my uncle and family thought, why can't we have our own charitable trust, which could do good to the society. In 1996, we started our Hare Krishna Charitable Trust with promoting our society and community in terms of how can we help them. And we started educating to IES officers, to the teachers, to the principals, giving back to the society. That's, that was a small step towards contributing to the society. As we grown in our company and our employees, we were thinking how can we good to do to our employees because charity starts with our own family and our employees. So in 2014, you must have hear about a company in diamond industry giving away cars, houses, and jewelry and that was the thought behind how can we have standard of living of our employees and first it's, Daji always says you first think about your family and then to the society so my uncle thought why can't we have increase in standard of living of our employees and I still remember in 2014 the average salary of our employees was 100,000 rupees per month and when we thought that we want to give back in 2008 the average salary was 12,000 rupees so my uncle not just thought about our own employees, but how can we give back in the society of industry that we live in and competitors and others also had to increase the standard of living of all the dementors. My uncle himself was a polisher, so he knew what is the value of a diamond artisan because those people who buy diamonds are much more richer but the money doesn't go down the line beneath where the polishing happens and similarly it's about agriculture so my uncle thought how can we give back to our employees and industry when i talk about the second generation we have a tradition in our company and family that when they graduate because my father and they were only fourth grade but second generation all did their mbas and bbas and graduates from uk and us i thought differently to be with my uncle in Surat and my other uncle called Ganchamba in Mumbai. So I had studied with both of them together and also in our journey of learning manufacturing is definitely there for three years training. And then I went to Mumbai for four years training, learning sales, manufacturing and IT. 
That's how we all have tradition to learn where our family belongs to. As simple as that, you must know your manufacturing processes because that's where your family had started with. No matter what business you want to go in, but you must learn manufacturing. That was the core thing that we must learn. I still remember a day in 2011 when I started my journey learning manufacturing. In two years down the line, I got engaged and my wife is sitting right here. The day when I went to the factory, I switched off my phone. I belong to the same youth. You all are sitting here and without a phone in a single day, we can't live in when the battery goes down, our heartbeats are increasing. In that world, I switched off my phone just to focus on the career that I was looking at. And after engagement, you all know, we, we cannot live without each other. That's the wording that we start with. But my wife appreciated that you want to focus on business. I'm fine with it. And all the weekends, I still remember, she used to come all the way when we, where we were there with the families. After seven years of training, so remember youth, I'm just here to share my experience and whatever you think you can implement, definitely you should. I'm not here to advise. So down the line, seven years of training and then now I'm always with my uncle the past six years, wherever he was for any event or for any occasion. He has never gone for an, I mean, like an, you know, he's like, I will go with my wife, my auntie and we'll have a vacation, you do your own stuff, no. It's always been a day that I was always together wherever he was. And I, I'm, I'm just very feeling proud that the reason why I'm here also is because that I had always been with my uncle. I still remember two years back we were here and uh, Daji just called my uncle and he showed him around. They both indulge in the activity that has passion towards giving back to the nature. And I want to share a small story. When Prime Minister of India inaugurated our facility in 2017, my uncle thought, you know, we took 36 minutes of our nation. How can we say thank you to our Prime Minister? And my uncle thought we will make one big lake in the village where there is scarcity of water. And again, in four months, my uncle worked hard in the degree of minus 45 and uh, day and night 18 hours there were a lot many excavation and kind of and kind of a mining thing happening but we made one lake in four months and again in four months prime minister was supposed to come to our district and my uncle said that i wrote a letter to you and the lake is ready my uncle was so kind enough to invite prime minister again and prime minister said yes that okay i will come and in four months, Prime Minister again inaugurated a lake in the village where there is scarcity of water. My uncle took up a mission that I will make 100 lakes. Why I'm sharing this story is giving back to nature is always good and nature gives you back in all the ways. Past seven years, my uncle has worked hard, but beneath his heart, there was a ultimatum for him to start second generation taking over the responsibility and delegate the whole responsibility of the company to second generation and my uncle Ganshambai. In six years, he has never taken a single decision of the company, but company is running the same way. He feels that while well, he is working towards the nature, it's nature's responsibility to take care of the company. When I say why we are all gathered here is also because we want to learn from each other and that's why the main story starts now. Daji heard, you know, how second generation get trained. I want to start again a story with my uncle always took, you know, nephews or sons wherever they go because there was an English barrier. So when they used to go to exhibition of diamonds in UK or in Basel or in US, he always took us together. So my three elder brothers, when they were, you know, on just in high school, they went to Basel show happening in Switzerland. And they went to a restaurant and, you know, since there was a language barrier, my brothers ordered all the food. And at the end of the day, everyone looks at the bill, same way my uncle did. And he said, why did you order papad here? I'm sure everyone knows what is papad. And there was a three pound papad and my uncle did not uh, scold at that moment. Uncle said, three pound papad, we can have all day over in India if you had not ordered. But my uncle thought, we as in second generation never has to thought about uh, money. Uh, it's not about that we did not care, but uncle always had papad and we ordered it. So my three elder brothers were, I mean, they did not know, you know, that they had not supposed to order papad in London, rather they can eat in India all the time. Uh, 
my uncle thought, how can I teach the value of money and you know, how my uncle and they have grown up. So my uncle in six months got out to a program and that's what I'm here to share with you after giving the background of our family and the company. My uncle asked the motivational speaker that he's thinking to send three brothers to a city where they have never gone without giving any identity with a limited money of only 500 rupees. This I'm sharing you story of 2003 and 4, so it's a long time back that this was happened. And uh, the motivational speaker says that this will be great if you can implement, because I know while I'm sharing here, the, uh, there was not many people who could implement. So in 2003, my uncle decided to send one of them to Pune, one of them to Jaipur, and one of them to Baroda. That was the first ever time my uncle thought that in second generation, this could be a helpful story. So all the three brothers went. The conditions are such that they were only given 500 rupees. A train ticket, they did not know, you know, where they were supposed to go. So when you get the ticket, you know which city are you going to go. With one month minimum, meaning 30 days that you have to live there. No identity, meaning you do not have to say that you belong to Hare Krishna group or the Lakya family. So kind of, you know, we, we didn't know that time what to do, but these were the conditions that were given. And I will share what happened, you know, next. So all three brothers came back and said that, you know, when we went to high school or college, we never learned such values of what we could learn there. So rather than sharing their story, I would start with mine. So again, when I completed 12th, I was just about 18 year and um, same thing, you know, was asked to me, are you ready to go? And I was like, yeah, because I felt already that this is going to be tradition of the family that everyone has to go. So they just told me that next morning you have a flight to Bangalore, and after that you have to be there and come back by yourself. The only condition is that you, you get 500 rupees. I got a flight ticket because Bangalore was far, and I, they did not want it to miss two days of train. You do not have to give any identity. So day one, when I reached here in Bangalore, I didn't know that the airport and where I was supposed to go was far. I thought I will go to some of the ashram, and I felt Shri Shri Ashram was very good, and I heard in the news about it. And when I, when I thought about it, I didn't know that it is so far. All the way, morning, 6 o'clock, I started. I reached there by bus, by train, and by... Riksa at evening six o'clock because I had to save money how I go. So I took, you know, lifts and everything by reaching there. Next morning I started and I thought, you know, there is always MG Road in each city wherever we go. So I started going to MG Road and looking from door to door to ask whether is there a vacancy or not. Couple of them told me, where is your CV? And at the you know, age of 18 in 2008, I didn't know, you know what is CV, what they were talking about. And they said, I said, what do you need? And they were like, at least write down about yourself. And I went to cyber and computers and I just tapped about myself and take the printed of 10. So somewhere when I go to CCD and they were like, come next Wednesday. And I did not have time to you know, wait for next Wednesday. So I just came back by myself and um, nobody took me as a, giving me a job. Of course, I'm saying it so peacefully right now, but there were cryings for more than a couple of days because I never stayed by myself and asking for a job. Next day again I went, it was, I mean, I did not succeed. Third day when I went to Subway and they were like, we have a job by the way, uh, but it's a different area called Jayanagar, I still remember. I was like, wherever you want, I can, but I am needing job. So on the fourth day, I got a job in Subway, and I looked after where I can stay after three days in Ashram. I found Jain Ashram to be there, and every day I have to pay 100 rupees. So paying 100 rupees every day is also a hell of a task, because in my pocket it was only 500. I, I still remember I never had breakfast and dinner. The only thing I used to have is lunch of 18 rupees alu porotha, and I used to request them, can you put a little bit of cheese? And I, I, I used to like cheese a lot. So this is how I stayed there. And after seven days of uh, subway, every day I used to call my uncle and I was like, uncle, I'm very fine, you know. Um, I, I think I'll complete my 30 days. He was like, okay, change the job. I was like, I'm just settled in, you know, seven days has gone and um, you're asking to change the job. But I didn't know that um, you have to do four jobs in four weeks. So I was like, okay. So again, I went back, you know, to the leads that I had. Someone said, Wednesday, okay, let me go back. So the next job was at United Nations of Benetton. 
and uh, at those point they had a discounted time zones where in morning 7 to 11 a.m. they had a discount also in the evening at 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. and they need someone to fold the clothes because when there is discounts everyone just opened up so I still remember a day you know the whole day from 7 to 11 I used to fold the clothes and after one week uh, I did a job at Reebok where making wear shoes to different people who used to come there and then two days of train ticket I took and that is how I completed mm, 31 days. This is what Daji liked a lot because when you are taking interview, I mean the companies like us in second generation sometimes we do not know the values of employment and you do not care if someone is leaving but right now in all second generation we have done this training and when you are hiring you will know about their difficulties time if they say they are coming from village and, and you actually understand them and someone has a hard time you try to understand you never want to fire someone just you know because they are not performing but rather you will motivate them so I still remember days when my uncle takes meeting every month of and we have 6,000 employees I was just telling Martin about it that such gatherings are usual for us and uh, every month my uncle motivates each and every employee and that is why my journey as I mentioned when I was born to here why did I come all the way to address here is the journey and the tradition and family values that we have and that is why I'm here but I want to mention something about why my uncle is known as he is his name is Sauji Bhai Dulakya and after started the company and past seven years he has been doing water conservation project after finishing 75th lake we mentioned to Prime Minister when we went there to give invitation card of my younger brother's wedding he said did you complete 75 you said and he was shocked that a single man can do 75 lakes why can't each district and if you remember before a couple of years Prime Minister mentioned to all the district I think the IS officer is also here that you must make 70 lakes in your district the journey did not finish after receiving Padma Shri award at the 75th lake my uncle thought this journey would should continue and uh, right now we have completed 155 lakes and the journey still continues <laughs> as a river mission and as I mentioned that I'm always with my uncle and two years back the Prime Minister mentioned to my uncle that are you not tired of doing this work and my uncle said no since the motivation comes from top of the line my uncle said we will still continue and uh, Gujarat chief minister Bupendra Patel called my uncle that I know that you know you have a river conservation project and you are going to complete because we had already finished 35 kilometers uh, river conservation project he said I want to do four rivers in our state my uncle was like, yeah, if you will, then we can do it. And coming out, uncle told me just one thing. We had 20 excavation machines. And my uncle said, if we have 100, we could complete three rivers. So this I'm talking about two years back. And um, we as a team started organizing. I still remember there are people here from World Bank. And there was a water conference happening last year, after 46th year. And I went there when my younger son was supposed to be born in US, when I visited a couple of times, I told my uncle, I see there is water conference happening in US. And he was like, yeah, so what? I was like, I think we can represent our foundation. And he said, but what is the use? I was like, I don't know what is the use, but the level at work that we do and what you are making the water conservation project, I feel the world should know. He's like, okay, if you think you can go ahead. And I registered our foundation and did all, you know, all the processes. Out of 728 organizations in the world, out of 29 were from India and we were one of them. So in just seven years, you think where we can reach if there is a will. And I, I met a girl called Kazaya. Why I'm sharing is because the youth is here. At the age of 23, I invited her to all the way from America to Amreli. Amreli is a small district in Gujarat. I think we have 33 districts. The last number is our village. And she came all the way to see the water project and she stayed there. So the past two years she is working with us and as I mentioned that Chief Minister wanted four rivers. We are already started doing fourth river right now when you see the Baroda has a flood over there and Chief Minister called my uncle, can you work here? My uncle says the same thing what we did in our district, it could be replica everywhere. And if you remember, there was a flood last year in Junagadh district in Gujarat. 
in one year we cleaned, there was so much of sewage coming in, we deepen it and you know it is within the city so nobody can take a risk but my uncle said since we are doing for the nature we shouldn't worry about it so we never thought about social media getting into the news is about bad news and you know there is a lot going on but my uncle said let's do do it so last year we did it Junagadh river this year we are going to start with Baroda river why I'm sharing all this is my uncle took up a mission now to you know revive uh, rivers wherever we can and today morning while having break breakfast I, delegates are sitting here and we're also talking rivers needs to be regenerated here in India and I think that's what the farmer needs I started with just I'm going to share my story and I'm just sharing you all the way from Surat to here just thinking about how can we give back so whenever you know the entrepreneurs or the businessmen or wherever you work for someone think about it how can we you know help others and that's what we are here to learn in Kana as well I'm thankful to Daji just to call up and say can you come here and share the story I was like yeah definitely one of my brothers will definitely come and you know for two weeks we were just waiting to hear from uncle who should it go so when I say that uncle picked up me that you can go and share your story because out of eight brothers I'm the fifth one in the family and four elder brothers and three younger brothers I'm always with my uncle and he thought I could share the story and that's why I'm here but I have always tried giving and balancing to eight brothers because four are elders so you have to convince them and three are younger so you, you shouldn't order them rather how can you help all the eight brothers that has been my target always and I think that's why I'm here So I wanted to share a small story about our family and our company. Thank you patiently listening to me. Thank you so much Thank you very much sir Thank you for sharing your story and the story of your family It has been most inspirational for all of us and especially our young friends, I'm sure. Knowing that building a family and a work culture based on intrinsic human values is the only way to harmony and success, that was most moving and truly inspiring. It was a delight to learn and understand that success is meaningful only when that success comes for the community and society as well as the family and that can come through hard work and efforts. We thank you sir. We thank all our respected guests on the dais for their inspiring and moving words for all of us today. I now invite Dr. Nivedita Shreyans, Program Convener for Rising with Kindness to please come and felicitate our guests on the dais. Let us appreciate the presence of our honored guests and their contributions with a huge round of applause. <laughs> 